Hey friends, so today is Monday. Today's the day after Easter. And when I think about the day after Easter, sometimes as a pastor, um, probably even just as a, a church uh, member, a member of the body of Christ, there's kind of a letdown um, after that day. And today's a little bit different because we actually didn't gather together in live, in person. Um, I know that sometimes Sundays can be a real busy day on Easter Sunday. In, in fact, I remember one year when we were doing a sunrise service, um, I was down at Calvary Chapel in Golden Springs, and we had to um, secure the place. We were um, having a, a live event at Citrus College, a sunrise service. We had to be there at 4 a.m., but it was daylight savings time. So actually we had to be there at 3 a.m. And I remember how I just was so tired and, and just kind of worn out uh, the next day on that Monday. Maybe on this Monday, you're feeling a little bit tired, a little bit worn out, maybe feeling a little bit let down because the day is over, celebrating the resurrection. And now we're faced kind of with what does life look like right now? I don't know where you live, but in Santa Cruz today is beautiful. The sun is out and... Um, it's a hard day for people to be sheltered at home. I know that students are at home and they are trying to um, focus on classes and trying to do schoolwork and, and yet they're at home and it feels different. And we keep waiting for this all clear sign. You know, when you do the fire drill or uh, you do a drill in school like that, then all of a sudden you hear the bell and the bell means all clear, everything's back to normal, go ahead about your normal duties. But this is lasting for some time. And from what I read um, yesterday and from what I heard going to the Department of Health and also um, some things that the doctors and scientists have been saying is that this COVID-19 could spring back up. It's something where we could shelter in place for a while and, and flatten that curve and it could seem like things are kind of getting back to normal. And then if everyone just kind of goes back to their normal everyday business, then we could see a spike of this later on, maybe even in August, and they don't know those things. So with that in mind and that kind of feeling, you know, after the resurrection, after celebrating Easter, I, I wonder what changes in our lives, what realization um, takes place? How does it matter? How does it make a difference for us now, after the resurrection. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we are going to read a short passage out of Matthew chapter 28 for what the disciples do after the resurrection. So Father, we pray that you would slow our heart rate, that you would slow our thoughts and our minds, and we, we ask you that you would meet with us. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would um, give us an understanding not only of your word, but these times that we live in, that he would give us wisdom and direction. And so we take um, instruction from your word and from what the disciples did after the resurrection. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So let me share with you that after the resurrection, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 11, it says, now, while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. And when they assembled with elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to some of the soldiers, telling them, his, say this, the disciples came at night and stole the body away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and they did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So with the resurrection, I realize that there are going to be people that say, well, Easter is kind of a neat thing. People get dressed up. If you go back historically in America, there were hats and bonnets that uh, women would wear and men would get dressed up in ties. Uh, I remember that when our kids were very young, um, we're starting out as a family and uh, Deanna's mom would make outfits and they would they would match or or for Christmas. And and Easter was an event. It was a time to celebrate, to be together as a family. And, and there was um, kind of a, a formality to it. I, I even wore a tie yesterday. I, I wear a tie usually on Easter, and it's this 
habit that I've gotten into and, and it's, it makes it a special day. But I also realize that if someone else comes to the church dressed up on Easter, because traditionally that's what they've done. If I'm dressed up, I have a tie on. It's not going to make them feel awkward. Um, but I, I also realized that it was weird because I was in a room like with no one else in it except for our worship leaders and our, our tech team, you know, just a, a few people. A and yet we could leave Easter and wonder what really happened. What really took place? The disciples faced these conflicting reports because soldiers were saying, oh, the disciples stole the body. That's, that's why Jesus is no longer in the tomb. But do you realize that from that moment, Christianity began to explode? That people became, became followers of Jesus after his death. It was after the resurrection that Christianity grew so exponentially that they couldn't shut it down. Even if they threatened Christians with death, even if they, they, they threatened Christians with persecution, the more that the persecution happened, the more that people just proclaimed the good news of the resurrection. And I think that when they saw Jesus rise from the dead and someone threatened them with death, it was almost like saying, that's the best you got? Because the good news of the gospel is that the life that we live is not it. This COVID-19 world in 2020, this modern world that we live in, this is not it. The tax relief that might come, the small business loans that might come to get things back to normal. And let's say that we do get the all clear and everything turns back to the way that it was eventually at some point in time. How does the resurrection affect us? Because like the disciples, there are a lot of people that say Easter is just this cool event or it was this shocking thing in history, but it really doesn't matter. And if you listened yesterday, remember that if the resurrection is true, if it actually happened, then someone can't come to church or watch a, a virtual church service and go, wow, that was a neat story. Because if the resurrection is true, then everything in Christianity is true. If the resurrection is true, then God is real. And if God is real, then the material and the physical life that we live right now is not an end in and of itself. So let me tell you what Jesus told the disciples after this. And by the way, if the disciples stole the body, how ridiculous would it be for these men who were afraid to steal the body, to risk their lives, and then for the Romans to say, okay, we are going to kill you if you continue to proclaim that Jesus is alive. At that point, if it's a lie, wouldn't you just say, okay, I was, I was lying, here's the body. Okay, we took it, here it is. There's nothing to gain from that. So understanding that it says in verse 16 of Matthew 28, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. We realize in the gospel of John that Thomas is one of those that doubted. Now, these are the 11 now, because Judas Iscariot was the betrayer of Jesus. But these disciples, after the resurrection, they go to the mountain which Jesus had appointed, and then they saw him, and they worshiped, and some of them still doubted. Maybe some of you have this experience, and, and this, at times, is the experience of the Christian. It's worship and doubt. And what I mean by that is, Belief means 51% over the line. My belief outweighs my doubt. But there are times that we worship with doubt. Have you ever doubted during a time of worship? During a time when things get crazy in your life? During a time when someone is suffering? Or at a time when God doesn't come through the way that you think he's going to come through? And the doubt can begin to creep in. But I want to encourage you as the disciples to continue to worship and continue to press in to the presence of God because doubt is kind of like those waves. And there's times that they spike and sometimes then they come down. And the word of God, it strengthens our faith. The more that we read, in fact, as a Christian, the longer that I've been a Christian, the more that I study, the more that I read about, um, you know, looking at artifacts that are found, um, archaeology, the more that I look at reasons, the more that my faith is strengthened over time. 
So as the disciples were there, Jesus spoke to them, and this is what he said, and here's the message to us today. It's this, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Now, Jesus just spoke about all of this authority that has been given to him. And I think the disciples would have been hanging on his next words. What is he going to do with that authority? Is he going to give it to us? Is he going to overthrow the Romans? Is he going to show that he's so powerful and wipe out all evil with the snap of his fingers? Jesus says to them, after telling them his, the authority has been given to him, he says, now you go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So Jesus' message to us after the resurrection, after Easter Sunday, is this. You, you go therefore, and you make disciples, and you baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, and you teach them to observe all things that I've commanded. And as you are doing that, as you are going about the business of the kingdom and doing what the Father has asked us to do, Jesus says, I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. Sometimes we only look at that last part of the promise, I will be with you always. And he always promised, you know, we, we say Jesus promised he'd always going to be with us. And, and that's true. But I want you to hear the context of this. The context of him being with us always is while we are going about the Great Commission, and by the way, the Great Commission, notice the word co. Co means with, because Jesus is on mission and he wants us to join him. It's the Great Commission. We're doing this together. And as we're doing this together, he says, I'm with you. I'm with you when you go and make disciples of all nations. I'm with you as you become a witness of me to the things that I've done. I'm with you as you teach others. So, friends, today, Monday, the day after Easter in 2020, I, I want to leave with you with a couple of applications of this. Uh, my friend Jay Kim, who uh, is the pastor at Vintage Faith Church, wrote a book called Analog Church. And it's about the church going back to analog. Now, the release of his book couldn't have been at a worse time and couldn't have been at a better time because it was released um, a couple of weeks ago, right when every church had to go digital. So, ironic, right? He writes a book about uh, analog church and how we need face-to-face -face interpersonal contact, being together in discipleship, being together in community, and when he wrote that book, all of these churches, we all have to go online now. We have to meet in small groups on Zoom or Facebook or Teams or Slack or whatever the technology is. But I think it's the perfect time for that message because when we get the all clear, do we really gather back together? How many people think, wow, this is really convenient because I could watch in my pajamas. And I could be at home eating a bowl of cereal, and this is nice. The temporary convenience of technology should not replace the eternal purpose of face-to-face -face interpersonal relationship and discipleship. Because that happens in relationship where it goes both ways. It happens as we live and work and, and walk and, you know, in, in the book of Deuteronomy. It talks about with your children, you know, when you rise up and when you, you lay down and when you eat and you're talking. And you could do that in the home, but God's called us to do that not only in the home, but outside of the home. So take this COVID-19 shelter-in-place time to, first of all, do that in the home. And maybe you live alone. Maybe you're single. Maybe you meet with just a couple of people and you have this little you know, four people on a Zoom conference or on some type of other technology. Let's try to, let's get together and let's talk about these things and let's pray for one another. And then today, I want to encourage you to log off, to log off, to take some time as a digital fast. Uh, maybe it's not the whole day. 
because you know maybe your work it's essential that you're on technology or maybe your school but after that log off of netflix and facebook and twitter and uh you know snapchat or whatever it is log off for a little bit and let your brain just heal and get quiet and i think you're going to find something that i find right now is that when i'm silent i have this kind of an add type of looking for that next thing and and wanting this real quick input and, and take some time to hear the still small voice of the lord because he wants to disciple me and you before we disciple others let's spend time with the lord alone and get quiet and let's be let's be healthy paint draw put some worship music on and and just read through scripture or take some time to write letters to people and log off for a little bit and allow the holy spirit to speak to you in that still small voice because after all this is over i think that there are going to be some effects some residual in the body of christ and things are going to change some ways and in some things it's for the better but there's going to be other things that change that are not for the better so let's get ahead of this thing let's take the wisdom that the holy spirit gives to us and let's try to push out a little bit farther a few months even to another year to 2021 and think how are we going to be different as a result of this and how do i need to guard my heart so that this doesn't have this shelter in place doesn't have an unintended um, consequence in my life so god bless you guys let's make disciples i love you and uh it's it's good to be together and to see you i i saw this comment jim said hey Heck, I want to run back to the brothers and sisters right now. I, I agree with you, Jim. So God bless you guys, and uh, we'll see you next time.